An insurrectionist mob, as hundreds of Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol one year ago today in an attempt to stop the certification of the presidential election. At least six Idahoans were involved in the deadly siege. Didn't hurt anybody. I didn't take anything. I didn't break anything. Uh, my intention was just to go there to have my voice heard. Meridian's Josiah Colt caught on camera climbing into the Senate chamber sitting in the vice president's chair. I do not condone any of the violence that happened. I'm there and it is tragic and it breaks my heart about what that turned into. Boise's Yvonne St. Cyr. Welcome to the communist country of America. Live streaming herself inside the Capitol. I don't regret going to DC. I went for the experience. I went because I felt like we have a country that we need to fight for and stand up for. If I am guilty of poor judgment and I'm guilty, then I'll own that. I own what I do. We tried, we tried, we tried. Also inside, Idaho's congressional delegation. That's Representative Russ Fulcher being escorted to safety, gas mask in hand. He later tweeted, I will always respect our citizens' First Amendment rights and the rule of law. The violence seen today is unacceptable. It does not move us closer to solutions. His congressional colleague, Representative Mike Simpson, offered this. We have a constitutional right to peaceful protests, but the clashes with police and destruction of property must stop now. We can disagree in a better way. Senator Jim Risch concurred concisely. This nonsense and violence needs to stop now. Later adding, today's events meant to disrupt a process at the heart of our democracy were unpatriotic and un-American in the extreme. Senator Crapo also acknowledged the right to protest peacefully, but said, what we witnessed at the U.S. Capitol today was not peaceful. Such violence is wholly unacceptable. All perpetrators should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, he wrote. Actions like today thwart the rule of law and could leave lasting, devastating consequences on our nation. It's been a year, one year to the day. Senator Crapo saying all perpetrators should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, federal prosecutors have so far charged more than 700 people related to the attack. As for the six Idahoans, Meridian's Josiah Colt, he turned himself in on January 12th. He pleaded guilty July 14th to obstructing an official proceeding and will be in court next on January 19th. 53-year-old 53, 53 Yvonne St. Cyr from Boise was arrested March 3rd. She is charged with knowingly entering or remaining in a restricted building or grounds without lawful authority and violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. St. Cyr supposed to be in front of a judge for a status hearing on January 17th. Nampa's Duke Edward Wilson was arrested April 15th. After first pleading not guilty, he pleaded guilty in September of assaulting a federal officer and obstructing an official proceeding. The 66-year-old is set to be sentenced March 4th. Pam Hemphill of Boise was arrested and charged on August 4th. She faces four misdemeanors, including violent or disorderly conduct. Sandpoint's Michael Pope was arrested in February and charged with two felonies and five misdemeanors. The 32-year-old's next court appearance is in five days. And 39-year-old Tyler Two from Idaho Falls. He was the last to be arrested on November 30th. He is charged with four federal crimes, including entering and remaining in a restricted building and disorderly and disruptive conduct while in said building or grounds. This is what has happened in the year since the riot at the storming of the U.S. Capitol. A year but still fresh in a lot of people's minds. This morning, Deborah Hennessy texted us. She asked, she asked us to reach out to Senators Risch and Crapo. She says they need to speak out against, uh, against this if they want Idahoans to know what they uphold, that they do uphold the Constitution and the sanctity of the U.S. Capitol. They also need to speak out against the violence against the U.S. Capitol, she said. We need to hear their voices. We would also love to hear their voices, Deborah. But however, after reaching out to them earlier this week to hear their thoughts and perspective one year later, we unfortunately won't be hearing their voices. We only heard back from three of them, in fact. Senators Risch and Crapo, they offered up the statements they made a year ago. Nothing new. Congressman Simpson didn't respond to our request this week, but did say this back in March as the lone Idaho delegate to vote in favor of bipartisan committee that would investigate the January 6th insurrection. 
I understand their concern, but the reality you was know, January 6th was a, uh, was a disaster. And uh, we need to find out what went on there and why. And these people that broke into the Capitol, literally broke into the Capitol, these were not just protesters. A lot of them were uh, there to cause damage. And uh, they need to be charged. They need to suffer the consequences of their actions. Meanwhile, in explaining his no vote on forming the bipartisan joint January 6th commission back in May, Rich said he didn't want it to become about partisan politics, I guess any more than it already was. But a special January 6th investigative committee was formed anyway back in June, consisting of just House members. However, both Representative Simpson and Representative Fulcher voted against that one. Mr. Fulcher, by the way, did respond to our request of a retrospective today, a look back one year later. He reiterated how the events of January 6th were wrong and those responsible should be held responsible. And constituent confidence in our republic has been reduced as a result. When asked about the 2020 election, the same 2020 election which he objected to certifying twice, even celebrating those objections with a dramatic black and white photo of him signing them formal objections filed just before the rioters rolled into the Capitol building. In fact, he was about to object to Arizona's electoral vote when the chaos began. We came back later and did object to Arizona and Pennsylvania. When asked about the election, Mr. Fulcher stood behind his claim there was widespread voter fraud in several states, saying, the debate prioritizing election integrity is healthy. Numerous states violated their own election laws, he says, prompting state legislatures across the country to focus on improving their election systems. We went over this claim of Representative Fulcher's back in January 5th of last year, right before he was about to make that objection. There hasn't been any evidence of states violating their own election laws. In fact, a lot of courts have backed up the changes they did make prior to the 2020 election. And in those swing states where there were alleged concerns of voter fraud, the Associated Press found only about 470 potential cases of such. 470 potential cases out of millions of votes. And if by saying improving election systems, Mr. Fulcher means some states have made them more restrictive, well, in some cases to the detriment of our democracy, then I guess so, they have done that. So that's what's happened in the year since the attack on our nation's capital.